Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue our tutorial here in the Silhouette Studio. Right now we're going to be looking at the design page settings. You can find that right over here in this section. Uh, this is going to be where you're going to find how your page is set up, what settings, what width, height, how you're actually set up portrait or landscape, and how your view um, is looking, you know, are you 180, are you 0, 90 degrees, you know, what mat are you actually using, uh, the reveal, and what uh, cut border, or if you're showing a cut or a print border, you know, just to go through those settings real quick. So, if you're using a portrait, you're obviously working with an 8.5 by 11 area to work with. So, if you have that setting, it should set up automatically. If not, this is where you're going to go. This is the automatic portrait. And if you have anything else selected, it will probably uh, go ahead and autofill what you currently have plugged in. But since I only am working with the silhouette portrait, uh, you, you get go to automatic if that's already highlighted. If not, then I'm sure you can have the letter aligned sit here because that will be the exact same thing. Then right here is your uh, setup for landscape or portrait. Now I said portrait quite a few times there. So portrait really just st stands for the orientation that you're going in. Portrait is the you know going height top to bo top to bottom, not uh, not going the height going left to right. So if we flip that, you can see that we're now in landscape mode. And you can tell by just how the position looks like now on the window. So I, I, I usually keep it in portrait, but depending on how your workflow and how you actually work, this is totally up to you. Okay. Now right here you can rotate your view, you can flip it 180, you can do a 270, you can do a 90, or you can put it back to zero. Okay, those are just your options on how you want to look at it. Maybe you're positioning something, you're using up a very uh, fine amount of vinyl that you really need to make sure you're using properly. These are all ways to make sure that you're using as much material as needed and without as much waste. Now your cutting mat, so if you're working with the portrait, again, you should be working with an 8x12. Um, you will have other options here. For the Cameo, you have a 12x12 option. And then you also have a 12x24 option. And a, you also have a stamp, original, and then it starts going into the Curio subsets here, which we will not be going into until we do a, a tutorial on that. So right now we're going to go with the portrait, which is what we're working with. Now here in the reveal, you'll see how the um, the grid lines behind the white bar, the white box here, where your portrait is. You can see those grid, those grid lines, and where they're actually uh, showing up on your actual physical mat. You can adjust this however you like that it doesn't affect anything that you're doing in the design. This only allows you to see a little bit more uh, particularly on uh, the positioning of where your image and where your graphics are going to be positioned on this page. So this is just more for you. So you find a reveal uh, which is another word for opacity. Um, you can find your own level here for your own needs. I particularly like to go full white so I can see it all, uh, but that's just my personal preference. Choose whatever works for you. Okay, so now we're going to work down here, and you, right now we have a show cut border, okay? Right now it's showing the cut border. If I click that off, you can see that little red line. If you look right over here, I'm going to click it back on again, and you see that little red line pop back on. It's right here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to also show you where the print border is. Now the print border is inset. Now I say inset because it's always going to be inside of the area that you're working with, okay? 
the print may be larger than the area that you're working with, but you can only cut within the area that is allowed by the settings of the plotter. So just keep that in mind. You can't go wider unless you set up another way. Again, I will be going over that later on in the videos. But right now, if you're going to be creating a graphic, your maximum dimensions are going to lay within either the uh, print or the cut border range, which is probably, I would say, um, a little less than eight inches on the width and the height probably right at about 11 uh, just so you have a better idea of what you're actually going to be using during your uh, production and your cutting phases of work okay now I'm gonna click off the show print border now so because I'm gonna be just working on a cut now right over here we have registration marks I was mentioning earlier video that we have the pixie scan image over here that is for a particular set of crops which I will be going over but for registration marks so you can line up your artwork with a cut a printed piece of artwork with your cut this is where you would be going to set those up we will be going over this in more detail, but just to give you a better idea of what you're going to be working with, um, these registration marks are essentially markers that are going to be printed onto the paper, the sticky back paper, or even your cardstock that will register uh, with the machine, and that's how you will know where something is going to cut on a page and if a lot of this terminology does not seem um, if you're not picking it up right away don't worry I will be using this terminology over and over again so you will get comfortable with understanding how we're discussing this and how you can uh, you know learn this uh, system and training um, as we go along and also to just so you all know there will be a mini guide provided uh, towards the end of the course so you can have a, um, a, a physical copy of this uh, course um, highlights and uh, quick tips uh, at your disposal without having to jump online to watch a video um, so just so you know that's coming up too registration marks now style you have a few styles to choose from right now uh, we're only going to be using the portrait and curio style this is type one now you can tell if you can see these little gray X's in these areas here I'm going to zoom in so you can see them a little bit better and here you can see like these little hatch marks. Well, these hatch marks are here for a very specific reason. Uh, they indicate that the things in this area are not likely to be cut uh, correctly um, if you happen to put something in that area. So if I were to draw, if I'm, I'm going over here to my little tool palette, I know we haven't gone over it just yet, but we will. Um, but let me just draw a circle here so you, I can show the representation of what I'm actually talking about. So I am going to move this object right over here in this corner. Now, this top area of the circle is not guaranteed to cut. I say not guaranteed because in some instances, your machine will read that and it will cut. But in other instances, it may not. There is no guarantee in this. But the guarantee lies if you stay outside of that area and you're able to cut this without interference of the registration marks possibly getting in the way of your design that you need to cut so just keep that in mind so stay out of the gray area but if you'd like to test it out try it out feel free that's up to you okay so we're going to go ahead and get rid of our circle here and we're going to go over here and we're going to look at the dimensions of these lines. So if I want to click my uh, fit to window button so you can see everything that's going on. Right here you can see the length and thickness of the dimensions here. So what I can do is I can shrink this down 
and as you can tell, as I shrink it down, my area that I have to worry about also shrinks down. But do keep this in mind. Having a better, having a larger registration area or places for your machine to register to is a lot uh, easier to register if you have larger marks. It makes the plotter a lot easier to see where it needs to go and what it needs to do. So just keep that in mind. But again, you can also test, and I always recommend testing. Whenever you get a new product, whenever you get a new type of paper or a process you want to try out, I always recommend just taking the first one, trying out a job, maybe you've done one before, loading it up, doing the process, but changing a few things, and to see if that process might be more beneficial to you if you were to change a few things along the way. Okay, moving on, we got, we're going to put those that length back over here. And then you can change the thickness of these lines as well. As you can tell, these lines will get beefier if you go thicker and thinner, obviously, if you go thinner. So that's really all it's doing is just changing the thickness. This also changes the fact uh, that it's easier to see and read and pick up if these registration marks are a little bit more identifiable and not something harder to see. Okay. Now we're going to be moving on now to the position. Now right now, these are inset, okay? There's that word again, inset. So they're inside of the um, print cut area. Now your inset is 0.625. You can bring that down and, or I'm sorry, bring that up. You can also bring it down. So we're going to bring it down first and go to 0.39. Uh, but you can also bring it in too. Maybe you don't have as big of a piece and you want to really uh, utilize the area correctly. You just bring it down into the area that you're going to be using. Okay, so the right works the same way and you can change and adjust to the dimensions that you need. But you can also push this all the way out to the limits and make those as far to the edge as possible, utilizing a full piece of media to its full extent. Okay, you can also click right here to restore all defaults, which will bring it right back to the 0.625 um, registration area. Now, right now it's in default. You can actually see that's highlighted over here is inverted. Uh, it's just flipped in that sense. That's up to you. How you're looking at your mat and what you want to see, those are the things you should be looking out for. That's all that is. Okay, so that is um, registration and a little bit of setup, and I hope that was informative. Uh, you can also please leave any comments, questions, or feel free to even email us with a link below uh, for any helpful uh, advice or if you're just struggling with something. We like to hear from you. Uh, over at Black Cap Design, we're here to help you uh, work towards uh, perfecting your creation process and to get you to the next level. So, uh, this is David signing off for Black Cap Design Co. And uh, look forward to our next video. See you then.